Hey guys, welcome to another news breakdown here on Soto Pop. Soto. All right, hey guys, as always, I'm your host Frozen Stratos, and I know, I know, it's been quite a while, but uh, we have tons of news to get through, and really, it's a whole bunch of common writer stuff, and. Um, you know, in order to break up these two blogs that I missed, uh, I'm going to be doing the mainline stuff first. I'm going to be covering the Zero uh, One stuff first, and then we're going to dive into the Kamen Rider Kuga stuff. Now, there's something that even we missed in the podcast that's going to be coming out later this week. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. There's something big at the end of Kamen Rider Kuga, and if you've been following anything from us... You probably already know what it is, but it is <laughs> really cool. But without further ado, let's hop into the news. First up, we have Barley Bar uh, We have this guy who is one of the third dudes uh, from the movie. He is rounding out the uh, Geo Movie Guys collection, um, and he looks fantastic. But uh, he comes with a few surprises. He has his light his lightsaber in stick mode. Um, Apparently, this uh, this blog sort of started a little bit of a debate about what the name is of this weapon. Uh, G-Man, yeah, G-Man said uh, that they are referring to this as the Long Sword uh, because for some reason this is not actually called the Revolcane, even though he shouts Revolcane when he draws it. I'm not quite sure. The Google Translate situation on this one was a little strange, so I didn't quite get the full context of this, but this thing isn't actually named the Revolcane, I guess. Um, and hey, G-Man is a bigger nerd than I am, so who am I to argue with him? Um, but that's not all. That's not all that this one brought us. We also, um, well, with the powers of J and I think Bio Rider, we have our very first fully transparent version of a Soto figure. Uh, this is meant to recreate technically his final form um, when he uses those powers and grows really big and he would not be complete without a big thing to hold. And now this is only important if you put the sticker on. Yeah, so uh, this is a really neat accessory and there are a lot of things that went into making this. Um, but overall, this thing looks really beautiful and we'll get into some other images of this later but uh let's talk about this um this sign because there's some intricacies to it uh that we need to talk about first up it does have a peg hole um and a connecting l shaped bit so you can more properly hold it it is three millimeters so you are able to put it on a stand though uh, you know it is going to be very offset um for the uh, thing itself, uh, in order to make this truly feel correct, um, they did have to make this like, th there wasn't a transparent um, sort of part to this sticker. Uh, so what they had to do was they had to fill in the back with clouds, uh, just like in the movie, and um, even have the little shadow in there for the leg and the arm, which again was in the movie. I didn't know that the the leg area was in the movie, but that is, this is all completely accurate. Um, so in order to recreate this, they made the, um, the sort of regular area, uh, more glossy, the regular gloss of the sticker, and then the characters themselves, the, the clouds are done in a little bit more of a black, uh, a matte, and then the arm and leg areas, those are done in even more of a matte finish. So, there are, again, there are intricacies to this thing. Um, so about these guys, there are there are a lot of paint apps on Barlkele, and the clear plastic version. Uh, they wanted to mention that hey, for all of those or for those of you that are makers, um, be sure to appreciate this one because you are able to see all the inner workings. And me being a maker, I'm very excited for this release. I've heard a lot of you know criticism of this thing. I fully understand. It took up a slot that probably should have gone to a zero one character, but come on, this looks really nice. I love it. Um, and yeah, uh, another thing to note about sort of slots and stuff. Oh, right, this comes with a lights uh, like a clear lightsaber revolcane uh, version of this weapon, so you could have it lit up. And I don't know why there is a fully black version now if this one exists, but 
cool, I guess. I mean, if you're buying Barlux alone, um, then you can have, you know, just the regular stick if you're not buying the clear, transparent version, but whatever. Um, anyways, uh, like I said, that's not all we need to talk about here. Uh, in this set, um, so we're actually getting what we saw of AI08. This is not all that we're, we're talking about today, but um, each of these figures were supposed to be um, one per bo or one per piece. Like uh, the figure, you were just supposed to have it in one box, and that was it. They weren't supposed to be split up into two. Um, but due to budgetary constraints, they actually had to make these guys two pieces each, uh, which is quite unfortunate. But um, could possibly have been that bottleneck that didn't get them released earlier. And I, I do think that taking out the, the quote dummy head or the fake head that they would put in really helped sort of lean, like make the budget a little bit more lean. But even still, they had to break it up into two boxes. That's why they don't separate, uh, their chests don't separate and work with that Soto play pattern. Um, but these are still really cool things here. Uh, they said uh, the paint apps are really what tipped it over, I believe. Uh, but yeah, anyways, this is really cool, but that's not all we saw of AI08 at this point. Um, we thought the next week was going to be all about, um, uh, what is it, the uh, Burning Falcon or, or Ikazuchi, either one of those two. Um, no, wait, we already got Burning Falcon. What am I saying? We're talking about Ikazuchi. But we didn't get that uh, because we got these guys instead. Um, this is fantastic. Another troop builder to add to your troop building collection. And I know it's going to be more difficult since, you know, these are in the main line and not in their own army builder line. But these are really cool. Uh, so these are the um, impossible box that they call it. Um, and there are a lot of things that they were able to do with this thing. There's a lot of value that they put into this one box. Uh, first up, you have option stickers. So... I mean, I'm not typically a fan of those because it means I need to buy multiple copies, but if it's if it's these guys, then I was going to buy multiple copies anyway. Um, so you can have them in either the angry or the regular neutral version of the uh, human gear. Um, so, yeah, like that. Uh, and then next, they actually had to remold the whole thing. You'd think that, uh, you know, you could share parts with uh, the initial trilobite mod gear, but there's so many straps and stuff that they had to remold most of the limbs and the chest. I believe the only changes here, or the only things that didn't change are the shoulder pads, the crotch, and the feet. Oh, maybe the hands too. Um, so that's, that's quite a thing that they had to do, and I very much appreciate it because it all looks very good. Um, another thing to note is that just like the Trilobite Magir, um, there were large surface areas that had a lot of paint, so they were able to put more paint on it. Like, they had large, you know, painted areas, so, you know, that's one paint operation, and I believe that's cheaper for them, uh, so that's good. Um, we've got the white and the silver on the cheeks. Uh, next up, we have the full layout again. Uh, this is uh, what we've seen, but that's not it for AI08. Um, if you check out the podcast that comes out this week, we actually did the math. Um, and there's actually at least one more character that's going to be in here. Um, because there are two pieces left to be, re you know, discovered. Also, they didn't number this, uh, this layout, and they typically do that once it's over. And then also, also, they said there's more for AI-08. Um, so, for all you Zero One fans that don't really like the Geo stuff, there's gonna be more in this set for you, don't worry. Um, but yeah, once again, that's not it. That's not all that we're talking about this week because we are now moving in to Kuga and this stuff is pretty cool. So with uh, the Pegasus form, it's pretty much what we got with um, Mighty and um, Dragon form in that he has the two tones of green on his chest. Uh, the eyes are compound. They mentioned it multiple times in this one and in uh, the Titan review. So I believe that the blue one, I, I didn't say this earlier, but the blue one 
does, I believe, have the, the compound eye effect. Uh, the crest, uh, once again, is painted gold, even though it is molded in gold PVC. Um, something different here is that the, um, I guess, bicep... Uh, Thing, like that that little guard thing that's they painted that specifically because um, a sticker would uh, sort of wear out over time because it is a separate piece and you're gonna have to load it and unload it I guess um, so you know that's really good I'm glad that they did that they chose that for us and I appreciate it um, another thing is that you have the gun itself you get the revolver and I if if you don't buy Kuga for anything else, buy it for this gun. This is fantastic. I love this thing, it's so funny. They shouldn't have this gun. It looks way more lethal than anything that they've ever delivered uh, because it's a real gun. Um, so yeah, that's cool. It also comes with the extended and the launched version of the gun weapon. Um, and the, yeah, that looks fine. The back handle of it is actually made out of PVC, uh, just, you know, toy safety standards and whatnot, and so that you don't sort of snap it because that is sort of a uh, very thin line of plastic there. Um, now let's move in to Titan, and this is where, this is where some of the really cool stuff happens. Uh, so first off, we've got the two tones once again, or at least, you know, the silver and the purple, but they had to supplement with some sticker. It looks fine. Um, obviously, like with all stickers, upon closer inspection, you're gonna notice some flaws. Like, it does look a little bit too red to me, but uh, it's fine, it's fine. They did a wonderful job paint matching this. Uh, same with the silver, the actual paint itself, because they went through a lot of samples to paint match this, just like with all the other ones. Uh, so they worked very hard on trying to get that one correct. Uh, the next thing to note is that he does have that little handle, um, so that, you know, he can turn it into a sword, and it looks great too. Uh, this is actually one of the swords that has the butt of the sword as a separate part, uh, so keep that in mind. Once again, this is a collector-ish, collector-focused line, so they are able to target this up and have smaller pieces like that, so that's really helping us out here. Um, and again, I wish, I, I wish you know, there were more of them in the market, but you know what? That's fine. Um, another thing is that he comes with bent hands so that you can pose him in various sword wielding poses a lot more naturally so that's really good um but that's not all something they didn't touch on something we didn't even notice when we were covering it uh, the the day of or during the podcast is that they hid something in the background of this image don't see it yet well let me let me do this as a tri chaser, he's got his bike, um, and I'm I'm very excited. Obviously, it's a prototype back there because you know gray and blurred out. Uh, and again, they made no reference to it because I'm pretty sure they wanted people to discover it. And what is it? Today's Wednesday, and it was on Saturday when they announced this. It took me a full four days to figure out that that was there. Am I doing my math right? I don't know, man. Time is weird now. Uh, but it took me that long to figure out that there is an actual bike back there that we could probably buy later, and I'm very excited. It means the bikes are going to continue in this capacity, and I do wonder if a GoRam is in store, because the uh, double bike is, you know, 40 bucks, and it has all the rest of its parts, right? So if you get a bike and a GoRam, that's, you could price that at 40 bucks, right? Like, you know? Anyway, that's it for me. Um, so yeah, this is all so very cool, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm sorry that it's taken so long for this to get out, but um, I made it a challenge for myself. I would not be able to open my action figures until I finish this episode, and you know what? I'm also going to be doing an unboxing of the very same Kamen Rider Kuka figures on this channel Right when this episode goes up, I'm going to be, or right when this ends, I'm filming this. So please, uh, go, go watch that video. It should be up, like, in and around the same time that this is up. So go ahead and check it out. Also, I, I have, I'm getting the two podcast episodes ready. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping I can pull through and get those episodes out. Um, 
this week so that we can at least be up to date very soon. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this episode. Hit that like button and subscribe if you want to hear more from us each week. Thanks for watching. Keep it juicy.